Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. I've been working with the LilyGo T-Deck running Meshtastic, and it's really cool. It's the, it's the perfect use for the T-Deck running Meshtastic. And we also saw this cool 3D printed case. I want to say kudos to Alley Chat. Uh, there's a different variety of shapes and sizes you can print it in, depending on your needs. I wanted to do an 18650 battery and a GPS module, so I needed the bigger back on that case. Yeah, I tried adding the GPS to the T-Deck via the Grove adapter on the side, but then when you think about it, you'd have those wires sticking out the side of the case. So we had to find a way to get around that. And I studied up and everybody was just soldering the GPS module to the pads of the Grove connector. I, I didn't see any other solution, so just want to bring your best soldering skills for that. Make sure to watch my short video on that topic. And so now we're ready to assemble the GPS module, 18650 battery, and the case. Okay, so I'm going to assemble this case with the T-Deck, with the GPS, and the 18650 battery holder. You want to make sure this switch is going to line up with the switch on the T-Deck. Here I'm making sure it operates smoothly in the case. And also I want to make sure that the T-Deck is switched off and that the switch is in the off position. Now when you go to put the T-Deck in, you get that USB port going down to the bottom and then you force it in, you see the switch lined up and that's popped in. Now we can snap this in, there's some snaps on the sides and there's actually some snaps at the top. Now I had to scale the case to get the width right. It was just too tight, so I scaled it 102%, but that left this big gap at the top there. So I took this piece of cardboard, folded over uh, one time, and that kind of acts as a shim, about two millimeters, and that makes sure that you'll be able to plug the USB cable into the USB port. If that were to slide up, the USB cable might not engage the USB port. I'm looking at mounting this antenna. I struggled with this a lot. You know, first of all, this wasn't the antenna that I have been working with. Uh, it's just a lone 915 megahertz antenna. It didn't come with its own SMA connector. So I'm using a stock Heltec V3 antenna connector. So I've got it connected to the board. Yeah, and I'm just trying to figure out, oh yeah, and that's going to be right up against the wire. And that reminded me, I wanted to apply some hot glue over those solder joints on the pads with the Grove port connector. I just, you know, that silicone wire is very soft, so I don't think it would break away from there, but you're going to have that antenna laying right on top of that, and if there were to be some wear and tear, you could get a short somehow. So I wanted to put a little hot glue over that now. We're going to go ahead and put that antenna connector into place. Get a little bit of that glue out of the way. It's real tight right there, no matter what you do. So, yeah, basically, I needed an SMA male-to-male -male connector to work with this. So, that's the female SMA connector on the antenna and the stock Heltec antenna connector is female. So, I have this male-to-male -male connector. And it's interesting because it pivots. One end pivots against the other. And I make the mistake of putting the nut on and tightening that onto the antenna connector. We'll see that. Yeah, so I'm getting a lock washer on there. Get the nut on there. And we get this all cinched up. Yeah, there we get that nut in place. And we go to cinch it up. Yeah, I'm even going to get some pliers. Yeah, we get us some pliers here. Anyway, if I get this cinched up, there's not enough of that SMA connector left to fully engage the male-to-male uh, -male adapter. We'll see this in a second. What it results in is the antenna will just spin freely the way the uh, adapter is manufactured. Yeah, I even switched the big pliers with the little ones. Yeah, because I couldn't quite engage that nut there. Yeah, there's only about an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths of an inch there left of that SMA connector. I'm going to apply a little hot glue there. Maybe that'll hold that tight. I'm hoping. And I also wanted to put some hot glue here at the top along with the shim to hold that position of the T-deck in the case there. 
There we go. A little hot glue is not going to hurt us here. So I think I'm ready to attach this antenna. So I screw this down. But see, the problem is that top piece there with the little nut, that just spins freely. You see it spinning freely right there. And so I can't even attach the antenna without engaging that little nut there. It's just spinning freely. Yeah, you can see the little nut spinning freely. I hold it down with my finger. I'll get the pliers. And I'll get the pliers to hold it. And I'll get it tightened up. And no matter how tight I get it on that end, it's still going to spin freely because it's not fully engaged on the other end because we have the original stock Helltech nut on the antenna connector. Because we have the original stock Helltech nut on the antenna connector. Yeah, see, the antenna is just freely spinning no matter what I do. You don't really want that. Yeah, it's just freely spinning. And I, I really gave it a college try here. Yeah, grab that guy there. Get it as tight as you want. You see, it's just still freely spinning no matter what you do. Yeah, that's not going to work. So, I want to take that off again. <laughs> what we need to do, yeah, let's get that male to male adapter back off of there. We're going to actually use the male to male connector instead of the nut on that connector. That got kind of confusing here. Okay. Get that one taken off. Get this one off. Okay, so I'm going to tighten this end of the male to male SMA adapter to the antenna. Let's get it uber tight there. Looks good. Now, there we go. We'll keep the lock washer on there. Now let's tighten this on. Going to go ahead and hold the inside nut. Yeah, the hot glue's there, but I don't know if that's going to hold it or not. And let's get this perfectly tight here. Give it another couple of turns. There we go. Now let's see. Is this going to work out? Yeah, see, it's very stiff now. It doesn't rotate freely so that you could set the radio on its side and have the antenna up at an angle like that. So now we're ready to move on. That's probably the trickiest part. Let's see. <laughs> I'm going to just set the case back next to here. Now what I'm going to do is hot glue the GPS module right there and hot glue the GPS antenna right below it. Yeah, the silicone wires are very soft. Uh, look for the links in the description down below. <laughs> Get a little dabble, do you there, of the hot glue. And I want to drop it this way, just like that. Hold it for a second. All right, that's stuck. Good. Now let's uh, get the ceramic antenna, a little dab of glue on there. There we go. Now I don't want the antenna wire in the way of the battery holder, so I'm going to spin it around like this. Hold it, hold it. There we go. Now if you remember my Helltech case video, uh, the wires were reversed on this connector, and it's really hard for me to show you, but yeah, right there at the top, I found if I got a like sewing needle and stuck it right above the wire in there, I was able to pull the wires out and then invert them so that the red is on the left and the black is on the right, which is the correct orientation. And then, of course, I've soldered it accurately here. And I'm going to fold these tabs up so the battery holder takes up a little less space. And it also has this little nub right there. we got to cut that off. I want a nice even surface for gluing. Let's get my hot glue. Keep it off my fingers if I can. There we go. All right, got a little on my finger. It hurt. Ow! <laughs> it is hot. Okay, let's get that battery holder in there. Nice and straight. 
press it long enough to make sure it sticks. Now let's see if we can uh, hook this battery connector in. It's a little tough. You know, my big hands, the little spaces that I get stuck working in, uh, it gets, gets to be a challenge sometimes. I hope you're having fun. I am. <laughs> yeah, you can't quite see it because my big hands are in the way. But I had a good feeling about this, and we got it. There we go. And that's the correct orientation with the red on the left and the black on the right. Let's get our battery. And again, you want to make sure... Well, now we got the antenna attached, so it's not so critical whether it's switched on or off. These are flat-top batteries, but the orientation is stamped on the battery holder. And so you want to make sure and look at the label. There we go. Positive to positive, negative to negative. Now we're actually ready to close this up. What am I doing here? Oh, yeah, we got the, got some uh, M3 nuts we want to put into these little recesses here. That's kind of tricky, even. I, I think I could have used some tweezers or something. Yeah. The case is well designed. It actually traps those M3 nuts so that as you put the screw in, it'll actually hold the nuts uh, firmly. Now, somehow I had these cool M3 socket cap screws. I looked for a link for those. I don't know how to replace those yet. I'm going to have to find a suitable replacement for those because I really like them. Now, when you close this case, you want to hook at the USB end of it and then snap. And then you can go ahead and turn your screws into those trapped nuts. We'll get those in there. And you see that antenna is not freely rotating, which is, <laughs> we solved that problem anyway. Okay. We'll go ahead, tighten up these screws, get them both tight. And I might just cut some of this out. Yeah, the way the case design is, that screw can go a long way in there. So maybe a shorter screw would be handier in this case, but uh, going with what I got was actually spare parts from a 3D printer was <laughs> what those socket cap screws were from. All right, we got the case closed up nice and tight. I'm going to go ahead and switch it on, make sure it works. Moment of truth. You'll see the keyboard flash in a second here. Oh, no. I guess I need to charge it up a little bit. It's not lighting up. Yeah, hang on. I got to go get a USB cable. Let's plug this thing in. There we go. Good. The USB cable does engage the USB socket there. Oh, okay. We can see the battery's charging. There's a faint blue glow there. That means the battery's charging. That's what I like about the T-Deck is whether it's on or off, the battery's charging. Uh, on the Helltech, you have to switch it. <laughs> I, I don't have any way to charge the battery with the Helltech V3 without switching on the Helltech V3. Okay, so we see Meshtastic loading up. Get the initial messages here. I want to check and see, does it see the GPS? Okay, so it says no GPS lock. And let's go back one more and it says, yeah, no satellites. So the GPS module is engaged. You're going to want to watch that short video where I attached the GPS via the Grove port connector. It explains it all. And I also made a short video about soldering to the back of the uh, Grove port connector onto the pads there. Okay, leave a comment down below. Give this video a like. And before you go watch more of my Meshtastic playlist or more of my LilyGo T-Deck playlist, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.